The lead from a February 15th story in AgriPulse reporting on a presentation made by USDA's chief economist at the Ag Outlook Forum read, quote, USDA is forecasting lower prices for most major crops this year as input costs remain elevated and farmers face growing export competition. A week earlier, end quote, a week earlier, USDA forecasted that net farm income would decrease by 27.1% or $43.1 billion when adjusted for inflation over the last year. When you consider that since 2022, inflation-adjusted net farm income has dropped by $80 billion, this will be the largest two-year decline in net farm income of all time. We welcome you back to the committee, and as we continue our work to reauthorize the Farm Bill, we are interested in your perspective on the challenges in the farm economy. As part of our efforts to write a new Farm Bill, we've been to numerous states across the country, and I've visited with hundreds of farmers, as has the, the chair. What I've heard from our nation's farmers and ranchers is that they're very concerned. Specifically, they're challenged by persistently high and historic inflation, both on and off the farm, stubbornly high interest rates, burdensome regulations, record large trade deficits in agriculture, and most importantly of all, rapidly declining commodity prices and farm incomes that will make these next five years some of the most challenging in their lives. Compared to last year, all sectors of agriculture and all areas of the country will see lower incomes in 2024. Some have pointed to a 20-year average of farm income as evidence that the farm economy is healthy. And we should talk about a 20-year averages because current interest expenses are nearly double that average. Likewise, input costs are 10% above the 20-year average. So while we hear talk of net farm income being above or near the 20-year average, it's often not accompanied by those data points that reinforce the tight margins under which farmers operate. I don't know why for some a 20-year average income is acceptable for farmers, but it isn't for other workers. When there were labor strikes recently, I don't remember the administration calling for a 20-year average wages for workers. But for farmers, this is supposed to be okay. When I'm talking to producers from across the country, they are sharing their concerns that they now must use their land and other assets as collateral to borrow hundreds of thousands of dollars to put a crop in the ground or care for livestock while knowing they will earn less money. Many are wondering if it's worth it. Typically, the rate of return on farm assets is less than 2%. You can get two and a half times that earning uh, in, a, in any CD. This is particularly true for small and mid-sized farms, the very type of family operations that, we, the, that has been put so much emphasis on I'm concerned about their vi viability as well. When I grew up, we had more dairies in my home county than we currently have in the entire state of Arkansas. That loss of population impacts the local economy, our schools, our hospitals, and makes life in rural America less desirable. I've seen that as I've traveled through Arkansas 75 counties. But if we truly care about rural communities and our farm and ranch families, Farming at all scales must be economically viable, and we must provide a safety net that works. Hello, friends. This is big news. The Biden administration has just confirmed new action has been taken to help the American people financially. Changes have officially been made to late fees, which experts say could save households billions of dollars. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for all details regarding this. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, do make sure that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. According to CNN News, Federal regulators have finalized a rule to limit most credit card late fees to $8 as part of the Biden administration's broader efforts to eliminate excessive fees. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau says that this regulation, which was first proposed in February 2023, will save American families over $10 billion annually by reducing fees from an average of $32.
The new rule applies to large credit card issuers, encompassing those with more than 1 million accounts, which represent over 95% of total outstanding credit card debt. This initiative is part of a broader push to address the challenges faced by families who are dealing with the high cost of living. This action by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau follows its proposal in January to curb excessive overdraft fees. The decision to target credit card fees also comes amidst a growing concern over rising credit card debt, which now has surpassed a record $1.1 trillion. Some parts of the U.S. population, notably millennials and individuals with lower incomes, have struggled with credit card debt amid a period of high inflation. This new rule seeks to close a loophole that has allowed credit card companies to increase fees on late payments. According to Director Rohit Chopra, this move aims to put an end to the exploitation of consumers by large credit card companies. However, the financial industry has criticized this regulation, expressing their concerns that it may result in more late payments and damage consumers' credit scores. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce has announced plans to file a lawsuit, describing the rule as misguided. Despite the industry's opposition, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau asserts that the rule will benefit consumers by closing a long-standing loophole and reducing the financial burden of late fees. The rule is expected to take effect on June 1, 2024. The White House is expected to highlight the ban on excessive credit card late fees as part of its efforts to combat corporate abuses during President Biden's upcoming competition council meeting. Consumer advocates have praised the regulation as a reasonable measure that will make a real difference for vulnerable families. Also, friends, according to Yahoo News, Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic expressed that the U.S. Federal Reserve does not feel immediate pressure to lower interest rates due to a robust economy and great job market. Bostic suggested that although he anticipates two quarter-point rate cuts by year-end, the Fed must tread carefully to ensure that current economic strength does not lead to excessive speculation and a resurgence of inflation. He emphasized the need for more evidence that inflation is stabilizing before considering any rate cuts, acknowledging the stress faced by some consumers, especially those with lower incomes, amidst high inflation and tight credit conditions. Bostic also expressed concerns about a potential surge in demand, offsetting progress on inflation. But despite this, Bostic noted that there were no signs of deterioration in the job market, giving policymakers time to address inflation. He indicated that once rate cuts begin, they may not occur consecutively with the pace depending on market reactions. The upcoming March 19th to 20th Fed meeting is expected to maintain the benchmark interest rate, with updated projections considering recent inflation declines. While investors anticipate a rate cut in June, this timeline may shift depending on inflation and labor market trends. Bostic's discussions with business executives indicated confidence in the economy, but did raise concerns about a potential surge in demand. He warned that widespread deployment of assets and hiring may unleash a burst of demand, posing a new risk of inflation, which he called pent-up exuberance. So dear friends, please let me know in the comment section below how inflation has affected your lives. Well, my great and beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Dear friends, thank you very much for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter this week's giveaway, friends, do make sure that you click and like several of my videos. And then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful 
and very blessed. We 